Okay. We're printing a test cube. Let's see if we have one here. Okay. So we're printing something like this, but instead of the honeycomb shape inside for the infill, we're going to print a solid infill. Here we go. I think the temperature is too low. It's not sticking. Ew. The fan's going though. It's like a giant blob of crap. Hopefully the second layer will be better. Uh, right now I'm asking you to do a solid infill. That's why it's going nuts and printing every single line. Uh, this is going to take some time. See, according to the software, um, <laughs> estimated time one more hour. Crap. Yeah. Well, so I expect the middle part is going to give me some trouble because there's that giant dab of plastic when it initially didn't stick to the board. I think I need to increase the temperature of the head and probably the temperature of the bed. Okay. Let's just keep it like that. Take a look. Okay, so now it's doing the, the border and the infill. It's going at a much faster rate. Hey, look, it's actually getting rid of the black dot. Okay, so the black dot does perk up a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. Hopefully it'll go away. Yep. That's a 3D printer at work. Uh-huh. Hey, it's even pulling its own plastic. It's pretty cool. Oh, I see a little bit of defect on the east side, or rather, on that side. Right. Let's see. There is the defect. You see on on the right corner. And the bump in the middle, the darkened spot. Let's see, do we still see it? Yeah, I think we still see it. Okay, so we see the bump in the middle has become just a black spot. And the bump on the right, well, it's going to be there. But thankfully it was just one time thing. Hopefully it's the only one here. Once again, it should be something like this size so we're whoo, expecting 30 minutes more it's a nice little GUI they have here it was expected time until you show you what exactly is printing at each time and you have like basic pause restart you got to check the temperatures uh, it's pretty cool stuff yeah. yeah okay back to the printer Oh, by the way, did I mention that this is called a Prusa Mendel Iteration 2? Yeah. Let's watch. Man, it's wasting so much plastic. Well, not really, but still. Now just imagine this replacing my cog. Oh yeah, did I show you guys? Yeah. The, um, you see that little dent part? Yeah, so... While installing the pieces, I had trouble with some of the holes which were misaligned when they were printed. So I got the brilliant idea of using a soldering iron to open up the plastic. Because hey, you know, you want to heat, you, know, you want to melt open the holes. So 
So it's, it sure beats filing down the hose, right? Um, and I was being a little bit careless, and whoops, I uh, touched the uh, gear, was my son Aaron, and yeah, that happened uh, that then. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to have affected uh, affected the um, the operation of the intruder thus far, at least. Back to the object. If I could put this somewhere. Mm, the computer is now reporting 18 minutes. I guess it's doing an overly conservative thing. Oh, it's pretty cool. You can see every layer being laid down. And that little gunk at the end clearly is unintended. Okay, so it's doing the outer rim fill, and then the in fill. I get to uh, select how many layers of outer fill, and what the shape and the percentage of uh, fillness of the in fill. So, all in all, pretty sophisticated. And you can see that it does um, perpendicular um, in fill patterns makes sense for structural integrity and check this out so it's actually pulling the uh, filament ah, that's just pretty strong motor right there oh focus the whole filament is pulling focus So while it's printing, it doesn't look like it's it's wasting that much plastic, plastic, because you know, it looks like here at the tip it's just wobbling back and forth, and it's not really pulling more. Well, it's pulling a little bit of plastic. All in all, even with this kind of ink fill, it's going to be a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 10 millimeter object. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's taking that much plastic. Which is good for me. <laughs> I'm gonna soon try uh, glowing the dark plastic. That's gonna be a whole different story there. So I had this brilliant idea of um, printing some glow in the dark rims for my glasses so that I could wear them to, say, a Halloween party, for example. Uh, yeah, that's uh, technology at work. <laughs> it's doing a pretty fun job thus far. Pretty accurate sides. I mean, this one here... Yeah, don't look at those. Those are botched prints for the previous one but this one here which I printed without fully calibrating you know there's some defects on top um, bumps and bruises tell us that um, the yeah there's a couple bumps here it, it tells us that um, the platform wasn't heated properly it wasn't binding to the bed the plastic wasn't being extruded at the uniform amount etc uh, and that's bound to happen without calibration, so this is the whole purpose. Uh, the bottom is actually pretty good. This is the bottom, you can tell, because there's some sticky-like things. That's just melted plastic against the painter's um, tape. Right? So, my first printed calibration ob object today was this, a, a 5.5 millimeter wall. And as you can see, the details on the wall is pretty nice, right? I mean, let's see if we can get focus. Yeah, okay, so clearly at the bottom, it botched the first few layers. It wasn't sticking, the extrusion wasn't coming out. There's a problem with the fan. Um, we, I installed this stupid fan that doesn't have a temperature control and for some reason the software sometimes turns it on sometimes turns it off during the first few layers 
I know that there's a setting in the fan that that does this, but it still, um, you know, misbehaves despite uh, configuring the setting. So I don't know what the deal with that. Hopefully that won't affect my prints too much, right? Because you know, in this case it was just pretty bad. Because one of the sized, uh, let's see, yeah. So that's that corner right there, right? Uh, the first layer kinda did not stick and then the next layer it kinda dragged the plastic along when it turned the curve pretty fast so then for the next couple of layers it was not laying down the corner that well eventually it recovered it you can see a similar effect here where the corner is a bit rounded at the bottom but eventually it recovered also she realized the the accuracy of this, right? Um, all in all, if you look at the side of the wall, that's pretty darn accurate, right? That's like I'd say 0.2 to 0.5 millimeter accuracy. Right. Yeah, that's pretty goddamn cool. Okay, of course I had these botched things. Um, progress cannot be made without botching things. Okay, back to the printing record. Uh, it keeps on printing. So seven more minutes. Heavy this object will be. Oh, it's pretty interesting. Let's take a look here. Um, focus, focus. It's hard for the iPhone to focus when the platform is moving. I want to focus on the object. Be stupid. Okay, 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 okay. There, focus. Crap. Okay, that's pretty good. Focus. Okay. You can see a little bit, uh, let's see, let me, let me bring the light out. You can see, maybe, that that initial blotch, bump, near the center of the object, towards the closest corner, um, is still there a little bit. There's still a darkened spot there. That's interesting. One little error at the first couple layers can still seem to affect the the quality of the print so 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 high, right? But I mean, like the bump is you know 0 0.1 millimeter. So in the grand stand of things, probably not gonna matter. Okay, I should help the spool a little bit. There we go. Let's unwind the spool a little bit. Once the calibration is fully complete, um, the next thing I want to do is, um, well, two things. One is print a, a heating duct for the fan, so that the, the thing doesn't just blow everywhere, and it will be more efficient.